morning. Welcome back here at ECMIT TV, brought live to you from the back of the exhibition hall here at the Bella Center in Copenhagen, Denmark. My name is Judith Cohen. I'm your ECMIT TV host. And it is 11 o'clock on the final day of ECMIT. And I have a very special guest to introduce to you who's sitting next to me on the couch here in our studio. Um, Gunnar Kalmater, you are the ECMIT awardee of excellence this year in uh, clinical microbiology and infectious diseases. Yes, I'm v very... Congratulations so on much. this huge achievement. I'm and very this, uh, proud and very honored by my colleagues to be elected the Excellence Award winner this year. I can imagine, I and can I imagine. I have thoroughly enjoyed my few days of fame here. <laughs> yeah, with the banner, with your picture large on it. Yes, and, uh, so I was told. I actually didn't see oh, it, you haven't but seen it's yet. somewhere out there. I think yeah. it's somewhere close to the registration area. Okay. Yeah. You, you could uh, take a picture of yourself yeah. with your own picture. <laughs> yeah, so um, it, 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 for many people, it mustn't have been a surprise that you were the deserving recipient of this award. You have a very um, esteemed track record as... Um, uh, as a scientist, as uh, head of the Swedish National Reference Lab on phenotypic su susceptibility uh, testing of bacteria in the past, uh, you were the past chairman of UCAST, you were the past president of ESCMID. Uh, there's so much to talk about. And um, you were uh, honored by giving um, um, a keynote lecture as part of this award. Yeah. Um, would you care to share with our TV viewers, TV viewers who, who may not have been there uh, a little bit about what you told the audience there? Well, I, I, you know, when I had to prepare for the talk, um, I mean, it's a mixed blessing to be awarded because you know that suddenly you have to prepare a 60-minute talk. Um, and it took me a while to sort of think about what did I really want to convey and what did I want to say. And, and why was I given the Excellence Award? Was it because I was, I'm a hard worker, or is it because of my achievements, or because I am a brilliant scientist? I don't think maybe the latter so much as being a hard worker, tenacious, um, like a dog getting hold of a bone and refuse to let it go, you know? Yeah. And, and probably that's how my colleagues would see me, that you know, once I got hold of UCAST, I didn't let go until we had actually accomplished the harmonization and yeah. standardization of yeah. everything from breakpoints to methods, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So I think it's um, the award in my case was sort of very much a lifetime achievement. Yeah. So sitting down to prepare that talk, I realized that um, I need to tell the story of those 20 years with 20 plus years with UCAST. Yes. So that's what I try to do during 60 minutes. Yeah, so you describe the situation from hardly any... Uh, from scratch. ...valid test for susceptibility. Everyone was doing their own thing, and everyone was convinced that they were the best, that they were doing the right thing, and everyone else was doing the, a silly thing. And, uh, and then, you know, once they started to discuss with each other, and they had a, a format, and, and uh, they had... Uh, the opportunity to sit down and discuss, and Eskimid gave them that opportunity, yeah. um, they suddenly realized that uh, yeah. science came before national opinions yeah. or traditions, and that there is actually a science behind it. And I've always found that it's amazing how many things we as professionals have convinced ourselves is the right and only way the right way and the only way to do things. And then when we meet our professional brothers and sisters, we realize that, who there are different ways of doing things and maybe the French are right or maybe the English is right this time. And, yeah. And in the beginning, there was a bit of, um, uh, you know, um, f an element of fairness in the process. You got to decide last time. You know, about yeah, this yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, and now yeah. it's our turn to decide. <laughs> but very quickly they that's lost the that. That's the human factor. <laughs> yeah, that's the human factor entering into it. But also yeah. tradition. Yeah. Uh, but very quickly they stopped that. And they started to discuss things from a scientific point of view. And, and yeah. we suddenly discovered that two countrymen might have different views. And, yeah. and that an Englishman might side with the French and the French with the Germans, etc. And then yeah. we understood that this process is actually working. 
Yeah. And it's been going on like that. And it's been sense. really embraced by many countries because otherwise yes. it would never have led to the no. harmonization no. That, that has been achieved. Yeah. Which is a huge achievement, I yeah. think, because uh, change is a very difficult thing uh, for, for many fields. Um, and in order to, to, to achieve this harmonization on a European level, And I least, think also we added some um, formalities and some mm -hmm. formats. The website was a great help. You know, yeah. everyone could go to the website and yeah. and they could ask themselves, I wonder what UCAS says. And, you know, it would be there black, in black and white yeah. on the website. And um, everyone could go there without paying anything. They didn't have to leave an email address. They, did, they could be anonymous. They could, you know. And uh, we have today an unbelievable 160,000 views per month wow. on that website. And... Um, that's pretty it sounds hard like to, a lot. <laughs> that's pretty hard to yeah. top. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, it's fascinating that you've 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 been around so long to see it all change. Um, mm. And we just had a little chat before we went live here uh, at ECMA TV about just even the ex exhibition hall here, how that has changed. Um, yes. You told me that when when you first started, uh, well, 1975 ICC in um, in London. Yeah. Um, and, the, and the exhibition hall was filled with? Well, the, first of all, the exhibition hall was a lot smaller. Much smaller, probably. And secondly, in those days, I would say 90 to 95% of all exhibitors were pharmaceutical companies yeah. bringing their agents yeah. to the market. Yeah. And um, they were handing out nice pens and cookies and mugs and <laughs> ties and you name it. Um, I've still seen some pens going around here. Yeah, yeah it, it does happen. Um, and today, 90-95% is really diagnostics. And yeah. the drugs, have, the agents have sort of taken second place. Yeah, so that's a tremendous shift in focus. Tremendous shift. Uh, and it may shift again, we don't know, yeah. because the future is very difficult to predict. Yeah. Do you have some expectations? Well, where, where, um, where we're heading, especially maybe on, on, on the topic of susceptibility I mean, if, if testing? I, if I had to predict, I would say that the relationship between diagnostics and agents is going to stay for a long time. Yeah. I don't see a situation where we're suddenly swamped with lots and lots of new agents. But I do see a need for better and better, cheaper and cheaper more and more competent more, diagnostic. More accessible, uh, yeah. yeah, more available, yeah. So I think this proportion between diagnostics and pharmaceuticals, but it's not only diagnostics and pharmaceuticals because it's also knowledge, basic knowledge. There is, you know, websites, there is books online, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a lot of sort of adjunctive yeah. um, things going yeah. on. Yeah. So when you held your keynote lecture, um, was was there was there time for questions from the audience that nope. was attending? Keynotes no, are it's traditionally just without questions from okay. the audience, um, and it's been like that for a long time. So keynotes, no questions from the audience. It was your platform. Yeah, this was sort of my platform. Be. Yeah, and for once. I could say anything <laughs> <laughs> without being questioned. And if I was yeah. questioned, it was that afterwards. That must feel good. <laughs> a lot of people came up afterwards and said, yeah. oh, can I ask you about that? Et cetera, yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. yeah. So what are questions that people ask you? What are they interested to, to learn? Anything from very nitty-gritty small questions about, you know, a single agent or a oh, single really? bug or a yeah. single breakpoint or, you know, something very too, yeah. too larger questions about the future and... Um, yeah implementation and you know in my country we do this how should we etc wow. so yeah all yeah. sorts of questions yes. and i take them on mail every day as well because being yeah. heading up the ucas development laboratory uh, which deals with developing methodologies background material for the steering committee but also for colleagues out there and we have a long tradition of putting everything we do out on the website for everyone to scrutinize yeah. But that also means that people write us emails every day and have questions about what we do and why we do it and how it should be interpreted. And yeah, yeah. Um, we take some between fifteen and thirty questions by email every day. Wow, that's a lot. And uh, yeah. we pride ourselves 
on trying to answer all of them within 24 hours. Wow. Uh, some of them take a bit longer <laughs> That's because impressive. you have to yeah, consult each other. But, yeah. but normally we manage. Yeah, yeah but that, it, it's, it's very indicative of how important this topic is for so many people. It's very close yeah. to every microbiologist, yeah. infectious disease clinicians, yeah. and for that matter also other yeah. specialties close to their hearts yeah. and to their everyday problems. And, you know, with, with antimicrobial resistance going the way it's going, <coughs> more and more colleagues end up, daily, end up in a situation where choosing an antibiotic is actually getting to be very difficult. Yeah. The options are fewer and fewer. Yeah. The cases where there is nothing on the chart or in the report to choose from um, are becoming more and more frequent. Yeah. So that's another type of questions we get. What do I do now? Yeah. yeah. Help. Help. Yeah. And, and people yeah. send strains to us and, and say, can you help? Do you have yeah. a, something up your sleeve which we don't have? Yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes we do, but sometimes we don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Which also makes everyday life very exciting. I can imagine. Because can we're imagine. in constant contact with colleagues in, yeah. in very far off places. In the midst of the yeah. fire line, yeah. very line of fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so this ECMED, you were also involved in another large talk, um, <coughs> or should I call it a pro con it was debate? A, no, it was actually a <laughs> it symposium. Was, it it wasn't was a symposium. Set up as a pro con. Yeah, um, but you took a con position. <clears throat> After well, we were asked, the two speakers, yeah. Vincent Catois and myself, we were asked to talk in favour of and what speaks against yes. uh, performing MIC tests. Yes. Um, so it wasn't really a pro-con in that matter that we had different opinions. It was just that we tried to list, you know, in yeah. these cases it's actually yeah. beneficial and in these cases it's, it's not, not so, so useful. It's not so beneficial. Um, yeah, with the outcome being that people... It was a very friendly conversation of... between yeah. us. <laughs> There was no, uh, no big fights. No big fights. <laughs> no, and so the outcome was for that the attendees got better insight in how to apply. I think the outcome this. of the talks were really that, um, was really that. You know, there are situations where an MIC will help. Yeah. And um, my point was then that if you're going to perform an MIC, make sure you know how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> to get it right. Because, yeah. you know, if you have a bad method or a method you don't control properly and you get, um, and you get the wrong MIC, then you, you do more damage than help. Yeah. Uh, but, of course, there are situations where an MIC is helpful, provided it's right. And then there are situations where it's an unnecessary exertion and unnecessary expense. And uh, we try to identify the, the various situations where that is. Yeah. And there was some debate... But I've been, you know, previously I've been in pro-cons where we actually do take sort of adversary positions. Positions. Um, and I've always enjoyed that. But yeah, for I can some imagine. Reason that, <laughs> for some reason it's not so popular any longer. <laughs> you just described yourself as a dog who will, won't let, let go of his bone. So I well, can imagine yeah. how, uh, <laughs> how you'd be in a pro-con debate. That would be lovely. Yeah. yeah. So reflecting, um, when you were writing your keynote lecture and um, reflecting on the Excellence Award, um, what would you say, what... What made you deserve this excellence award? Is it your hard working? Is it the achievements, uh, the huge <coughs> achievements uh, on, on susceptibility testing? I, th I think it's Did a, you find a mixture an answer? of some of those things. The hard yeah. work, I think, is very yeah. important. The tenacity is probably yeah. important. The fact that I have been in service for 20 years to Eskimid, or more yeah. than 20 years. Yeah. Um, so will you go on? Is the next question. Yes, yes. Well, that's a tough one, isn't it? Um, I certainly won't stop right now, uh, and I will not stop tomorrow. Um, that's great news for our viewers. I hope, I hope some of my good friends will tell me that it's time to stop. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, well, as long as you keep, keep achieving great yeah, uh, well, yeah, breakthroughs. I think my um, achievements, as it were, has been linked to the fact that I have always had a knack for finding really able co-workers, friends, yeah. collaborators, both inside UCAS and outside UCAS. It's a very and, important talent as well. Um, and I, I think probably I've managed to be enthusiastic about what we need to do. 
Yeah. Um, and maybe that's really my greatest asset is my enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. if you if you tie that to tenacity, you know, it's a deadly cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> it's an excellent cocktail. <laughs> um, Gunnar, I'd like to thank you for taking the effort yeah. and the time to come here and my talk pleasure. a little bit more about uh, yeah. about this. Um, for our viewers, um, you can watch the uh, keynote lecture by uh, which was a link to this excellent award by Gunnar um, on the on-demand platform uh, as soon as it comes available please watch it I think it will be very uh, inspiring and the enthusiasm will come across to you as well um, we will be taking a short break here at ECMA TV and we will be back at the clock of 12 with our very popular element the lucky wheel of fortune so a uh, link will be sent out uh, uh, through the platform and um, I think approximately five minutes to 12 make sure you join copy the link um, enter the link into your browser make sure you come into my uh, my uh, studio here in my zoom and then I get the chance to select you to have a shot at the lucky wheel of fortune and win you some really great ESCMED or ECMED uh, prizes and merchandise. So um, make sure to join us, 12 o'clock, lucky wheel of fortune. See you there. <laughs>